Hi, my name is Derek Van Beaver. I'm a member of the teaching team here at HBS for Clay Christensen's course, Building and Sustaining a Successful Enterprise, or BSSE in the school's shorthand. Some of you all watching this today will know from personal experience that we structure the course around 20 different frameworks and theories that we call predictive theories. These are theories of what causes what to happen and why. Uh, it's our belief that managers use theory all the time when they're making decisions, even when they're not aware of it. And if you can arm yourself with a set of theories that has some predictive power, it will help you to make better decisions into the future. One that I wanted to talk about today is uh, a theory of mergers and acquisitions that we refer to by the shorthand LBM, RBM. Uh, in particular, uh, we observe that most acquisitions fail because managers have not thought through two basic questions. First of all, what am I buying? And second, how should I integrate this new company into my operations? And in fact, should I integrate this company? That's really the key. So LBM, one side of the spectrum, that's uh, leverage my business model. These are acquisitions of resources, cash, technology, talent, uh, customers. Uh, the key here is to integrate these acquisitions as swiftly and completely as possible. So think um, uh, industry roll-ups in the banking industry, um, aqua hires in the tech industry. For an LBM acquisition, the key is to integrate swiftly and completely. The other type, way at the other end, notionally, is what we call an RBM, or reinvent my business model acquisition. Here, you're buying processes. There's something that this target company does that you'd like to understand better, but have never been able to do on your own. And so you want to bring this company into your fold, look at them carefully and understand how do they do this thing. Uh, here, it is absolute death to integrate that company because you then run the risk of destroying the very thing that you're buying. Uh, those of you who uh, did go through the program here will know that in first year marketing, the very first course, the very first case that we teach is a case on uh, Quaker Oats acquisition of Snapple. Uh, they bought Snapple for something like $1.7 billion, uh, tried to integrate it with their Gatorade operations, and over the course of three years, destroyed over a billion dollars of, val of enterprise value uh, through over-integration. So this is, this is uh, what we're about here. We're trying to understand why do managers make these mistakes all the time, and how can we avoid such mistakes? This... Um, over-integration is very common to see in the world, and so we like to find examples where uh, we see companies doing it right. And recently, in our current events discussion here in class, we um, discussed uh, one of these sort of all-too-rare examples where a management team actually really got it right. This is an article that we pulled from the Wall Street Journal uh, earlier this year on um, PetSmart's experience in acquiring Chewy. Let me uh, give you a little uh, backstory here. So um, I think uh, like a lot of retailers, PetSmart has been going through some uh, challenges recently. Um, BC Partners, the private equity firm, bought uh, PetSmart in 2015. They executed a series of you know, turnaround improvements and they watched sales um, rise for a while, then go flat, and then begin to fall. Now, of course, uh, anyone uh, these days who's thinking about, hmm, what's, why, are, why would a brick and mortar retailer start to see sales fall? You'd think, well, Amazon is probably the culprit. But in this case, when they looked into it, they found that there was a very different cause of their uh, sales decline. And that was this upstart e-commerce company called Chewy. Now, Chewy had been founded several years earlier by someone who was convinced that he could uh, replicate the hands-on, close relationship that customers had uh, in a brick-and-mortar environment online. And any of you who have gone to the Chewy website will know what a wonderful job they do creating that intimate feel, um, uh, bringing expertise to your questions about your pet's diet, nutritional issues, um, building customer loyalty through repeat purchase. It's really a wonderful thing. So BC Partners um, 
resolved to do two very difficult things. First, they convinced their lenders to allow them to acquire Chewy for about three and a half billion dollars. And second, even harder, they left Chewy alone. They kept Chewy at arm's length, studied and admired what it was doing, and ultimately decided that they wanted to take Chewy public. So here's the payoff to the story, right? They bought Chewy in 2017 for $3 billion. They took Chewy public in June of this year for $11 billion. So they've created $8 billion of market value at a time when most IPOs are falling flat. So they really were able to run against the tide through very, very smart process. So in a world where analysts and investors look at any deal and pencil out all the possible efficiencies, try to figure out all the costs you can squeeze out of acquisitions, here's a company that did it right. If you're like me, you can look back across your career and see example after example after example of companies yielding to the pressure to wring out efficiencies and in so doing, uh, essentially, um, kind of defeating the whole purpose of the acquisition in the first place. This is a good example to keep in mind of a management team that got it right. It's our hope um, in this class and at this school that if we can use theory um, productively and understand it accurately, it can help us to build enduringly successful enterprises. Thanks a lot for watching and look forward to seeing you again.